All right, hey, what's up, guys? Gratuitous from itsgratuitous.com, and welcome back to the final video in our M Audio Oxygen Pro overview and setup series. Again, this is all for FL Studio usage. Again, when you are watching a review out there about a MIDI keyboard, make sure that the review is pertaining to your DAW. Otherwise, it may not work very well with your music program, okay? Things like you know headphones and stuff like that, that stuff applies to any DAW, but something like a MIDI keyboard, not always okay so i hope you guys have been enjoying so far again if you guys want to learn fl studio i'm an fl studio trainer and i have tons of fl studio courses from beginners to more intermediate and advanced and if you want the best experience you guys can join the membership where you can watch all of my fl studio courses there's currently 26 courses um, and if you want to start slow, I also have a free book for you. It's called Five Keys to a Successful Beat. Tons and tons of valuable tips in there. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. Okay, so this video is all about setting up your knobs and sliders inside of FL Studio. It's just going to be kind of a quick overview. I don't want to go too in depth because I do want to create a video one day about project links and global links. Okay, so these are two different things. Uh, that allow you to have a really amazing workflow inside of FL Studio. And I believe project links take precedence over a global link, okay? We'll talk more about that a little bit in this video. So how do you set up a knob? The most easiest way is just to right click any knob and you can go link to controller and you can simply just move a knob. Okay, as you can see, this knob is now moving FL keys. So I believe this is called a project link. And if you save the project, close it and reopen, this will still be linked, okay? It also takes precedence over a global link, which if we right click, you can see override global link, all right? If you wanna reset something, you can click link to controller again, you can just reset it and just go accept. And as you can see, this will not work anymore. I also just wanna quickly talk about stock plugins to third-party plugins. So if we have a stock plugin, like let's say FL keys, most often you can right click and go link to controller. If we have a third party plugin, let's just load up something like uh, Silent One. Uh, these typically are not, a, you're not able to right click, okay? So yes, it's bringing up a window, but this is not the same window which we can link to controller and stuff like that, okay? So how you can do it is you can move a knob like this, you come up here to tools and there is last tweaked, and you can link it like this. But the easiest way to link stuff inside of FL Studio is using multi-link to controllers. And again, this works for stock plugins and third-party plugins, okay? So we're gonna start with the compressor. So what you wanna do is you just enable multi-link to controllers. And you just move the knobs and you're gonna see it registers it right here, okay? And then we just move another knob, another knob, another knob. Let's just also use the gain, the wet gain, okay? Okay, so with these five knobs tweaked with multi-link to controllers enabled, I can simply just move the knobs in order of how I want them to be assigned, and that would work fine. You can also right-click and you can go override global links. If you want this compressor and these knobs to be set up, no matter what project you're working in. So if I'm working in this project, or if I open up a new project, the knobs will be set up because they're global links. And whenever this plugin window is focused, you can use the knobs to get hands-on compression, which is really cool and really powerful. And that's a good use of using hands-on. Okay, so that's global links. If I were to just move the knobs right now, which I will, okay, this is a project link and it just pertains just to this project. So if I save this project and reopen it, it will work here. But if I open up another project, these assignments will not be mapped. Okay, so again, you can look into global links and project links. That's all I'm going to get into in, the, in this video, though. So I clicked multi-link to controller. I moved these five knobs. Now you have to think threshold was first. Let's just say I want it to be on the first knob. Okay, now you're going to see it's two of five. Okay, because that means that I already moved the first one. And now it's on ratio. We'll move the next knob. The next one is attack, okay? The next one is release, and then the next one is the wet gain. So the first knob is controlling threshold, okay? The second knob is moving the ratio, attack, release, and then there is your gain. So again, this is a project link. If I were to save it, it stays in, in, only in this project. And that is the quickest way is with multi-link to controllers. So you click it, 
you move the knobs that you want to set up and then you can tweak them in order. And if you want to adjust any of them, you can come here, right click and go link to controller. So if you want to reset it, you don't want it anymore. You can do stuff like that. Um, there's also like the remove conflicts. I think if you want to use like that same knob for multiple things and with this window open, you can always hit F1 brings you to the help manual and tons and tons of good information in there. Okay. Um, I also want to show one more thing here. So you can come up here uh, to the arrow and you can go browse parameters. And this allows you to access everything that is able to be routed or automated in this plugin. So here is a cool one. Let's just go style. So as you can see, the styles right here, I'm going to go link to controller. And so one, two, three, four, five, that was uh, this one's the wet gain. We'll go six and the sixth knob will be the style and I'll hit play. I'll turn on the volume just a little bit. Okay, so right now it's being compressed really hard. And so watch, we can uh, mix up the compression style. So this is the bus. Right, so this is a really cool way of getting hands-on mixing if you want that. And again, if you do the global links, then this setting would be set up for all your other projects. Okay, so just a quick recap. So the easiest way is just to right click something, go link to controller and you can adjust it. If you want this knob to be set up across all of your projects, you can go override global link. If you are using a third party plugin that does not allow you to access this menu, you can just move the knob, you come to tools, Here's last tweaked and there is the same settings. Okay. This is like that right click menu, but it, in my opinion, I would just go multi-link to controllers. This is the easiest way. And if we want to, um, let's just say the knee. Okay. And we want to adjust it on the slider. You can see that's how easy it was. So you go multi-link to controller. Let's, let's, let's say like the range, move the slider. Okay. And that is how easy it is. So um, if you guys have any questions, you guys can leave a comment below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series on the M Audio Oxygen Pro. I'm super, super happy with it myself personally. Again, not every single manufacturer offers semi-weighted keys in a 49 key um, MIDI keyboard. And the price range is pretty fair for what you get. This thing's pretty jam-packed. Um, again, Paying six to seven hundred dollars for a MIDI keyboard is quite excessive, especially when there's no sounds in the MIDI keyboard. So, if you guys are brand new to FL Studio and you're trying to learn all this stuff about what is a MIDI keyboard and stuff like that, check the link in the description. I have a playlist for all these videos about the M Audio Oxygen Pro. You know, like what is a MIDI keyboard? What does it do? Right? There's no sounds in a MIDI keyboard. And so the M Audio Oxygen Pro, it's priced around 300 to 350, you know, depending where you live. Um, so I think it's a very nicely priced product. I think the semi-weighted keys are nice. We get awesome transport buttons inside of FL Studio for a really, really good workflow. There's the free MIDI script that allows the transport buttons to get set up with the loop button. I have my little uh, premium add-on template if you want to be able to adjust. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't show you that. Um, so how it works inside of FL Studio. Um, let's just load up FL Keys here and I'll do that quickly, okay? So if we want to adjust, let's say Decay, we're going to go Link to Controller and we can move this knob, okay? Now, if I want to use the same knob on a different bank with that premium add-on template, you just hit the bank. As you can see, the color changed. And I, I did that just to signify that this is on the next bank. So let's say we want release to be on that same first knob. Okay. So we go to the first bank, which is orange. You can see it moves to K, right? We go to that second bank. Now it moves the release. Okay. If we go to overdrive, we'll go link to controller. We will go to the next bank and we will use that same knob. Okay, so one thing you have to know when you are using the different banks is built into these MIDI keyboards is something called soft takeover. And without getting too intense, uh, you have to reach, like the knob has to reach a certain value before it kicks in. 
So for example, if you go from bank one and the knob is like positioned like this, and then you go to bank two, which is using the same knob, that it doesn't just jump in value and change the value for you. So you have to reach a certain value before the knob kicks in. And that's kind of how the soft takeover works. Again, you can read more on that topic. But it, what I'm saying is if you're moving the knob and you're like, oh, it's not working. Because as you can see, I am moving the knob. Look in the top left. It's not like FL Studio doesn't recognize it. So the release is actually over here. Because if you remember, bank one was decay. Bank two was release. And then now it's green. Bank three is the overdrive. So if I'm on bank two, knob one, which is controlling release, you can see that it's at like what, like two o'clock or something. So it's more to the right. You can see the knobs way to the left. So if I move the knob more to the right, you're going to see that it's not going to kick in until it reaches about that two o'clock. See, now it is. Now it's working. Okay. So watch this. If I have this fully increased, go to the next bank, which is bank three, which now this should be controlling overdrive. I have to bring down the knob to overdrive, which is about 11 o'clock, right? And right now it's at like one o'clock. And again, look in the top left there. Now it's working. Okay. So there you guys go. So again, if you have any questions about the free MIDI script or the premium add-on, or if you want to learn FL Studio with me, again, I have a training platform. There's 26 courses. You guys can learn uh, you know, from a brand new beginner. If you're wanting to learn the piano keys, music theory, drum loops, you feel free to reach me at hi at itsgratuitous.com. All right. So I'll leave all the links pertaining to what I've talked about in the videos. Okay. So again, this was a YouTube playlist that I put together for you guys, a nice, easy way for you guys to understand, you know, is the Oxygen Pro right for you? How to get it set up when it comes to your um, MIDI script and how to get it set up in FL Studio. I'll leave my free book in there, Five Keys to a Successful Beat. I will leave a link to my training platform at itsgratuitous.com forward slash courses. And if you want to stay updated, I also have a podcast. It's called Music Production Made Simple. So that's a way to stay updated when you're on the go. Okay. So again, always feel free to reach out to me at hi at itsgratuitous.com. And I'll talk to you guys in future videos. Bye.